Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to a new video on the channel. So today we're going to talk about how you can market either your own local business or clients that you're working with. If they are a local business, how do you market them on Facebook and how do you make sure that your clients are happy and that you bring them value each and every day with the marketing that you do on your agency? Well, let's just get right into it. Since this series is going to have multiple episodes, I'm actually going to make this video into a multiple series. So there's going to be multiple videos going up on the channel on how you can set up your ads for your local businesses, right? Or if you're running your local business yourself. So this is going to be a a in-depth series on how you can market either your own local business or local businesses that are uh, hiring you to do your to do their Facebook marketing basically first of all what we want to do is go on Facebook obviously and while you're on Facebook the big mistake that a lot of companies or at least local companies smaller companies usually do this uh, the biggest mistake they do is that they all they really do is run boosted ads and if you ever seen a boosted ad before you probably have what it basically is is that the the facebook or the company itself they make a post on their social media and they say hey we got a sale and uh, get buy one dog and get one free right so they, they basically do a post on their page uh, and then they just push the blue button that says boost this post for fifty dollars a hundred dollars whatever they decide to uh, boost it for uh, but the problem with boosting posts on facebook is that those boosts are not really ads you want to run because all you really do is throwing money at facebook boosting the post and facebook is just gonna say okay let's put uh, let's put your post in front of as many people as possible and that is definitely not going to be efficient for either your marketing uh, and you're not going to target the right people. So most of you probably already know this, but I have to say just because a lot of people don't know about this. But what you want to do is go and set up a Facebook business account uh, or you can do it under your private Facebook as well. Otherwise, you just go on Google and search for Facebook business and it should be the top Facebook business and just add your company right here. So I'm going to have to blur a lot of these out. But what I'm going to do right now is just go to manage my ads on Facebook. And this is basically the Facebook ads manager. And this is where you're going to have all your ads and all uh, your campaigns. And depending on the client, if you do have a client, you'll have to make sure that you get the access to the account. Uh, I could talk about that in another video if you want me to cover that as well. Uh, but in this video, the first episode, we're going to talk about how you can set up your targeting. So the first thing we are going to do, this is the new Facebook layout. It hasn't really been out for that long, so it's kind of new. Uh, this is an old account. I've been running a dropshipping store. This is very old, uh, probably about a year old right now. So ignore all of these previous posts. We can even remove all of these because these are just trash. Uh, so let's clean this up so we actually... And so you actually can get an idea on how it actually going to look when you load up your ads manager. OK, so this is how your dashboard is going to look like when you log into your Facebook ads manager. And mine is in Swedish right now, so I'm going to translate it for you. Uh, there might be some weird translations, but otherwise you're going to look essentially the same. Up here, you can switch what uh, account you want to use. Uh, this is my private one, so we're just going to use this one. And what you do is basically create a campaign right here and it's gonna load up your first campaign okay so this is gonna be the name of your campaign so let's say you're running a campaign for a local pet store so i would probably name this the name of the store so pet store is the name of the store and we have a or the store itself they have a special deal on dog food so i want to make sure i remember what campaign i'm running so this is basically for dog food dog food right and this deal that they have on dog food is going to run between uh, let's say it's 31 today so 31 10th until let's say uh, 31 11th so this is basically doesn't matter what you put in here this is basically just to organize it for yourself so in, so you yourself actually can see what's going on and you can just easy uh, basically easily understand what's going on in your ads manager 
uh, basically to organize everything. Okay, so we keep on going down. This is where you can pick how you want to run your ad. And there's a ton of different ways that you can run your ads. You can do brand awareness, you can do scope, if you want traffic to your website, if you want interactions on your post, if you want people to install your app or whatever, uh, if you want video views on your videos, if you want to generate leads. Uh, this is basically where Facebook makes it easier for people to put in their email. Uh, messaging, if you want people to message your page on Facebook. Conversions, if you want to make sure that Facebook optimizes your ad uh, to make the ads run better for conversions. And b this one basically sounds really good. Uh, I don't recommend you to use conversions unless you have a lot of conversions from before because what ba Facebook basically do with all these conversions is uh, let's say you have one conversion. Facebook is going to scan that person person that purchased your product and say, oh, this person like this, this, and this, and this. Let's show the ad um, more of like, they try to narrow the ads down to target people that are similar to the people that are already converted. But if you only have one conversion, there's not enough data for Facebook to use uh, to optimize the conversions properly, right? So what you basically want to do is wait until you have around 50 conversions. Then is when I start running conversions as a, a goal on my ads. And I don't really run conversions that often if I'm working with a local client. It's kind of more for stores that are targeted for e-commerce. So if you're running a dropshipping store or just running an e-commerce store, right? Uh, product sales, basically more for online stores and store traffic. Uh, this is some bullshit that Facebook has that basically show show people are close to your store uh, about your store. Uh, never tried it. I haven't heard anything good about it. So. What I usually go for is interactions because interactions, especially if you're running a local store, uh, definitely does very well if you target your local market good enough. So we are going to go for interactions for this one and we want post interactions. Uh, you want, don't want to do the sharing test right now, the A-B testing. Uh, this one campaign budget optimization. Basically what this one does, hold on. Uh, let me give you a quick explanation. Uh, so basically how a Facebook campaign work is that you have your campaign right here. This is the campaign and under the campaign you have different ad sets. And what these different ad sets do, do is basically that each and every one of these ad sets have different targeting. So let's say this one is targeted for moms. This one is targeted for, let's see, we can get it again. This one is targeted for dads. And let's say this one right here is targeted for uh, kids, right? Okay, so if you have the campaign budget optimization on, the budget on your campaign, so let's say it's $5. Uh, let's try to make a five, $5 up here. What Facebook basically is gonna do is it's gonna divide uh, the budget equally amongst all of these uh, until Facebook has enough data to say, oh, the kids don't like this ad. The kids are not converting the people or the kids are not liking this post. The kids are not interacting with it. It's only the moms and the dads, right? So what Facebook is gonna do is not spend more money on this one or it spend very little money on it, okay? And Facebook is gonna prioritize these two. And it can even be like the dads are not even doing it either, so Facebook decides, oh, we're only gonna spend the money on the moms because they are interacting the most. So that is basically how the campaign budget optimization works. But for this campaign that I'm running right now, we're only gonna do one ad set, so we're not gonna have the campaign budget optimization on. So when all that is done, we click on next. Right here, you're gonna name your ad set. So the stage we are at right now, look, we finished this one. This one is good. So we're at right here. So what you wanna name your ad sets that are gonna be under your campaign. And this kind of matters what you're gonna target in your ad. This is just to organize, doesn't matter what you put in here. But let's say we are gonna do an ad, sets, ad set targeting dog owners because we are running our pet store that is running a campaign for dog treats that are on sale. So we're gonna do dog owners. Uh, and let's say our targeting is gonna be 35 to 55. I usually do this, this in the end. We can actually do it as well. So we can come back to this one and actually do it later. 
So ad delivery optimization is going to be post interactions. We want people to comment. We want people to like uh, tag their friends that need dog treats. Uh, that is all good. Daily budget is what I usually go for. Uh, this is just this, in my opinion, is just better. And this this way you can set your daily budget each and every day instead of setting a lifetime budget where Facebook is just going to run your campaign over time until a specific date. And then it's just going to end on that uh, day. And what I usually go for in the beginning depends it all really depends on either your client's bu budget or your very own budget. So if you're running a campaign for a bigger client that wants to spend more, uh, let them spend more. You are going to get a lot more information quicker uh, than if you're spending five dollars a day. But the minimum I would spend is five to ten dollars a day. It used to be five. Uh, but since Facebook is getting a lot more expensive, I usually go for $10 a day. Uh, so we're going to start with $10 a day. And this is in Swedish crown. So it's 100 uh, around 100. It's not really, but I usually uh, even it out like that. Then we're just going to keep going down. And here is the targeting custom audience. We're not going to have a custom audience right now unless you already have one. But if you never worked with Facebook before, we're not going to have a custom audience. We're going to cover that in a specific video as well. So we keep going down locations. So let's say your uh, client is a construction company, right? And they only do construction in a specific area. So what you want to target is not everyone in this place, because if you do everyone in this place, let's say your client is in New York and he only does construction in New York. The problem is, is that New York is going to have so many tourists. They're going to have so many people visiting family and stuff like that. And the, what's basically is going to happen is your ads are going to start showing to tourists because they are in the area, right? You don't want that to happen because they don't have a house. They don't need construction company in New York. Uh, so what you want to do is people who live in this place. And what you're basically doing is just removing so many people. Uh, we can actually do this as an example we can do harlem harlem works okay let's do harlem okay so something went wrong i have to restart it let's not do harlem let's just do new york uh, united states something is just not working right now okay something is not willing to work so i'm just gonna put new york right here uh this is probably targeting the whole area of new york which is all these uh, it's new york is kind of wide right it's quite a kind of a huge place um so let's say our dog store is in Manhattan, right? What we would do is put Manhattan right here and make the area very small because people are not going to travel one hour, two hours just to go to your store. You want to target the real local people. And this all depends. If you're running a construction company, most construction companies are willing to go further out if they have a bigger or, or a, a bigger client that wants a construction done, right? So what you would basically do is this is where you really optimize it depending on where the company uh, usually have their clients from, where the clients are from and where they are willing to go. And if you are a local shop, you don't want to target this area too big so you can make it very small, right? And let's make sure people who live in this place, uh, that's good. If you want to target, if you're running like a tour company or if your your clients basically are tourists, what you would do is people have traveled to this place. Uh, and that way you're going to target people that are, are actually not living in the area. They are just traveling. Uh, and that way you can target for either your hotel, Airbnb, uh, your ice cream store, stuff like tourists usually go to. We're going to put New York right here. Our dog store is in New York. Uh, here is the age area. And this all depends as well. If you're running the company yourself, you probably know who normally comes to your store. So you probably have some kind of idea on who is going to be your customer. And if you're working with a client, just go ahead, ask the client, what is the normal age of your clients? And uh, they're probably going to say for my dog store, it's 35 to 50. Uh, it's not going to update right here because my page has been translated to English. I've uh, tried this before. It doesn't really work, uh, but it, it is still at 35. Okay, so we have 35 to 55 uh, as our age. But if you're running the store yourself, you're probably going to know uh, typically what age people are in your store. Uh, so that way you can narrow the targeting down even more. 
But if you have no clue at all, if you just started out your business, what I would do is just start at 18 to 65. Uh, but you sh usually you have some kind of idea on who is going to shop in your store. But if you get no clue at all, put 18 to 65. And after you've been running the ad for a while, you can actually read the data on your ads and see on who is actually clicking on it. And that way you can kind of see on who is interested, right? Sex, we both men and women love dogs. So we're going to keep both of these on. Uh, if you're running a, a, a women's store with women's clothing, you would probably put women. If you're running a store with only men's clothing, you would put men. Uh, so it's kind of like you have to understand on who's your target market, right? If you want to test on who is cheaper uh, to target, you can always do one ad set with men. Uh, like I did in the example, you can do instead of moms, just men and women. Uh, and that way you can also see which of the ads are going to be cheaper and give you better results. Uh, but for this one, we're going to put all uh, languages. Since this store is in New York, we're going to put English all, which is going to target everyone who speaks English. And that way we can actually get rid of a lot of people that don't speak English. And uh, we only want people to speak English. Otherwise, they're not going to understand our ad. It's going to be very hard to put a lot of different ads in different languages, right? Here comes the targeting. So detailed target audience. And this is basically where you try to narrow it down so you don't target all 4.7 million uh, men and women between 35 and 55 that speaks English in New York. Not all these people are going to be interested in my dog treats deal. So what we're going to basically do is search for dog and go to suggestions. Uh, under suggestions, you're going to get things that are similar to dogs. So dogs, Snoop Dogg. So most people would say dogs are probably a good target. Uh, but the problem if you target dogs only is that Facebook, people that have the interest dogs, or at least that Facebook sees it, uh, it could be just someone that watched a short video of a dog on Facebook or something similar. And that way they are put into this audience. It's a very broad audience. A lot of people are probably search for dog uh, sometime on their computer and you're going to be put into this target audience. So what you want to do is go for something more specific than not everyone is going to like. I, I myself am probably in the dogs category, but I, I'm not really interested in a dogs deal. And I'm definitely not a dog owner. But if you want to reach the dog owners, uh, you what you basically want to do is go for the more narrowed down interest, right? So dog lovers is definitely not something that people that hate dogs would like, right? So dog lovers would probably be a good test. Uh, so I would probably use dog lovers. Uh, dog training is definitely very specific and not everyone is into dog training. And if you're into dog training, you probably have a dog. So dog training is also going to be one of our interests. This is a good target audience. It's quite big for a local pet store. Uh, and what the reason really is, is because we have such a huge area. But if you put your local town or if you put your local zip code, your area, uh, that is basically stuff you can do in the targeting right here. You can see that we are targeting. Uh, we can actually see it now. We're actually targeting a big part of New York. And someone down in Manhattan is not going to travel all the way to our store uh, by Lake Ontario, right? So let's actually narrow this down a bit. Now when, it, when, it, when we can actually see the map. And we're actually going to target this place instead. So Syracuse and New York, United States. I'll make sure we remove the United or New York one. I think it's gone. Okay, good. So we fixed our target marketing and people are pr probably not going to travel 40 kilom kilometers just to go to a dog store. So what we're going to do right here is just narrow it down by 17 to 17 kilometers. And what we're basically targeting right now is just the city center. And if your dog store is right here, what you can do is basically put the address of your store and that way target around it. But we're just going to target the city center because we don't actually have a store. And what actually happened is we are only down to 12,000 people. And that is basically a very targeted audience uh, for our dog store. So this will definitely be a good, good ad set to run. And it's very hard to, to say that the ad set is going to be good. But this is definitely people that are very interested in dogs. They are close uh, in our area. 
they are between the ages that our store normally uh, has in the store and they are all men and women and they all speak English so we do have a good targeting what I would do right now is start running this ad set and after a while you can see if it's running good or not if it's not running good I would keep everything the same I would just switch out these two or take a look at who's interacting with it is it men is it women is the age wrong uh, something isn't wrong all of that you can see after you've been running the ad uh, which is great so we're gonna keep on going clutch type we don't want that one and the final step is gonna be edit the placements you don't want to run your ad on every place there is so we want to remove both Instagram and audience network and this all kind of depends on where you want to run your ad I normally go for Facebook because that is the place where I find uh, the most boomers to hang out uh, which is good for my targeting if I'm running a ad targeted to these people okay so let's see we only want the Facebook feed we're gonna go down in stream we don't want those ones we search we don't want that one in our article we don't want that one as well uh, we only want the Facebook feed and what I also recommend if you want to run let's say Instagram feed just set up a new ad set and run that ad set to only Instagram and that way you can compare oh is uh, Facebook or Instagram performing better if Instagram is performing better for your specific store of course you want to stay running uh, Instagram a lot more in the next video we're going to talk about how you can set up your ad how you can design your ad and how you basically can make sure that your targeting and your ad aligns up and make sure that people actually convert into real customers so that is gonna be it for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did please make sure to like this video also comment if you have any questions i'll make sure to reply to those as well and this is gonna be a new series on this channel so make sure to subscribe so you can follow up with the new videos that are gonna go up on this channel about how to market local businesses on facebook but that is basically gonna be it for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time